Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Very good. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> are you ready to start? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Malik with The Third Place. We at The Third Place are a team of technologists, artists, and veteran brick and mortar owners building a software that helps create lasting relationships between local businesses and their customers. And today we have a very special, very special local business. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Christina from Kurbom Raw Chocolate. I started out in Austin, but now I work out of Wimberley to bring everybody amazing, raw, healthy chocolate that they can feel great about eating. That's amazing. Yeah, you deliver everywhere, right? Yes. That's amazing. Well, I haven't had the opportunity to deliver internationally, but I'm willing. But uh, nationally. Anyway. Yeah, nationally, I do. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, tell us how you started Crew Bomb. Well, I love to cook. I love feeding people. And um, my daughter, who was five at the time, had a dairy allergy. She still has a dairy allergy, but she doesn't care now. She's 14. She does what she wants. <laughs> um, but, you know, she was always sad about the things that she couldn't eat. So I was trying to, at all times, like, figure out alternatives that I could give her. And um, mm. my husband bought me an alkaline cookbook that had a raw chocolate recipe in it and well actually it was just a chocolate recipe okay it wasn't raw you were supposed to melt the cacao butter um okay. and use agave nectar and it was it kind of just got the wheels turning I started making it and then was like oh what if we didn't cook it you know what if we what if we just blended it what if we used honey and what if we topped it with stuff and just started feeding it to friends when they came over for dinner and everybody loved it except for her by the way <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> that makes so sense know, it's fine whatever yeah. <laughs> it is what it is yeah. um what so actually can you explain the difference between chocolate and then raw chocolate what is like technically what the difference is yeah so Pretty much any chocolate you buy in the store, uh, the beans have been roasted and the chocolate's been tempered. So tempering it, they just heat it up, cool it down, heat it up, cool it down. Um, okay. The specific process, but it, that is the gist of it, is um, they're putting it through this process so that it'll be more shelf stable. It'll be more mm -hmm. baking stable. So that's one positive thing about tempering is that it helps the chocolate to like hold its shape in a cookie. For example, mm -hmm. like my chocolate is gonna marble out, it does does what it wants, cannot be contained in that way. Okay. Uh, but our chocolate is not tempered. The only heat that it encounters is really just from friction and pressure in the sun. We're blending it, pouring it, setting it, and then hand wrapping it. That's awesome. And so that is like a healthier mm -hmm. way to do chocolates, right? Yeah, so anytime that you, not anytime, but in most cases, right, the the less processed it is, or the less you introduce heat into the equation, the better it's going to be. So it just uh, preserves a lot more of those naturally occurring trace minerals and nur oh my gosh, words, <laughs> naturally occurring trace minerals and nutrients. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of people don't know this, but uh, dark chocolate is one of the best natural sources of magnesium. Okay. So um, it's got a ton of antioxidants in there. There's just so much good, and any time that you're cooking it, you're lessening that value. Yeah, that's really cool. Did it? Was there like a learning curve? Did you take a while to learn all of this stuff? Uh, the learning curve was how I can scale it up a little bit without ruining the chocolate. If you if you blend it incorrectly it becomes something that doesn't resemble chocolate and is not edible in any way. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's oh my really goodness. weird. It's like the, the best way I can describe it is like it seizes up and becomes like chocolate water and something else goopy. I don't know. 
I, I don't understand chemically what's happening there and I love chemistry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So did you like study it or did you play around and try to figure it out? I just played around. I mean, I've learned about it as I have went and when I started the company, I was actually going to school for nutrition. Um, okay. But I loved doing this so much that, you know, the more the more I got into the nutrition program, I mean, just even the first couple of classes I took once I was done with my core curriculum, I was like, they are not teaching things that I agree with in any way. And, you know, it just, it made me realize that this is what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. So really I cool. continue to learn about nutrition on the side, but uh, no longer pursuing that degree. That's my right. husband really wants me to switch over into a chemistry degree and then get an herbalism degree. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, it would be fun. It would be fun. Right now I'm like, okay, but I just, I just need to like grow my business, but I, I love all those ideas. He, he always thinks really big, which I love. Yeah. It sounds very supportive and lovely. Oh, he is. Um, so you talked about, so when did you start your business? Uh, 2014. Oh, okay. So this is seven years and but I mean, midway through, I took a little break to have my second kiddo and yeah. You know, I've been all over the place, like, trying to decide, do I want to do a commercially packaged good? Do I want to stay small? Do I want to do weddings? Do, you know, do I want to do online sales? And you really can't tell until you're walking the path, if you like so, it. That's actually a good segue into my next question. What is the biggest thing that you've learned, learned in doing since you started your business? The biggest thing I've learned, like had to learn as I went. Like in general, like in doing your, in doing business or something that's specific to Prove On. Um, really for me, it was that the thing I love most is making the chocolate and feeding it to people. So every time that I've tried to stray from that and, you know, um, do something larger not that I wouldn't ever do anything on a larger scale but when I've tried to make that my focus and streamline things and you know it just it really cut the creativity out of it and it wasn't until I um I was doing a collaboration with a friend who had a supper club and I started making truffles like as a little um as a little nibble before her dinners and I would match the flavor to whatever her menu was. It wasn't until I started doing that that I was like, oh, this is what I love. I love somebody to tell me, this is what we're having for dinner. What are you gonna make that goes with it? That's so lovely. Yeah, it, it sounds like you're really creative. And so everything that goes around, it's like being a, a painter or being an actor or something. Yeah. All the business of it is sort of meh. But yeah. what you love is the creativity. Yeah, and I mean, even down to like the packaging, like I love finding beautiful conscious packaging. I love making it gorgeous for the customer when they receive it. Hopefully I do, but you know, you it's <laughs> every aspect of that creation. But really when it comes down to like the marketing and stuff like that, it, I mean, if I could have a whole other me that really enjoyed that part of it, mm -hmm. I'd be doing great. <laughs> well, we can help you a little bit on the, on the... You guys already have. You've been amazing. But I mean, don't, don't stop. Don't stop. Do continue. <laughs> well, we will absolutely continue. We love working with you. Um, so since you, we just talked about like the creativity of it, do you have any uh, big dreams for, for Crew Bomb going forward? Um, I'd really like to increase my online sales. I wasn't sure about that originally because, you know, I, I felt like I should try to stay local and, you know, not have such a carbon footprint with the shipping. Mm -hmm. But the more I look at the market, the more I realize that 
this isn't really out there. You know, like you can't just find a chocolate that is just cacao, coconut oil, and honey. That's true. low in sugar and, you know, all these things. So I've decided like, okay, we'll ship it. We'll just do it as kindly as possible. And everyone around the country should be able to have this if they want it. Yeah. So that is the goal is to to do better with my online sales and really focus on that more. But also mm -hmm. I'd like to do more special events and gatherings. I really love it when somebody just says like, you know, make me a couple hundred truffles. Here, here's it sounds, what <laughs> it sounds like you're very uh, close to your community in Austin. You're based in Austin, right? Well, I was in Austin. Now I'm in Wimberley, but I do okay. still have a really robust community in Austin. Probably, I mean, I think it's making me a little bit slow to create a community in Wimberley because I love my community in Austin so much. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that's another thing I've learned as as a business owner is like, you have to connect with other business owners mm -hmm. and having friends that are that are kind of on the same path and doing the same thing and have similar visions just makes everything so much better. That's true. That's true. Do you feel like uh, starting Crew Bomb has brought you closer to the community? Definitely. And going and doing Crew Bomb like in more of like a public setting as opposed to being in the background and just taking orders and mm -hmm. you know doing wholesale or any of that like going out and interacting with the community at the farmer's market every week has really continued to bring me back to center there have been so many times that i've just been like what am i even doing um am i just screwing this all up like what do i have to show but so many lessons i have so many lessons to show my package is now my packaging is now beautiful, thanks to my graphic designer patience and expertise. If anybody needs an amazing graphic designer, DM. <laughs> um, but, you know, just like going out and talking to people, feeding them the chocolate, it has always just reminded me of like why I do this. And that's, that makes sense then why you, w you want to do more um, events. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess for a lot of those events, I probably won't be there watching the people eat the chocolate, but which is kind of unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do a lot of uh, a lot of artisan markets and my home market at Barton Creek, uh, a farmer's market. Yeah. You get a lot of that interaction and it's a great opportunity to network with other businesses. I've met a lot of really amazing small business owners um, that have, you know, helped my friend and I she runs Conscious Goods. We've mm -hmm. been able to like create little markets that we do on occasion because we meet so wonderful cool. like female business owners. That's so, awesome. yeah. All right, are you ready for the non lightning round? I've stopped calling it the the lightning round. We used to call <laughs> it the lightning round. It's uh, no longer a lightning round. Are you ready for that? Yes. <laughs> okay. So tell us three interesting facts about yourself. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. You're super interesting. You can find. I'm sure I am, right? <laughs> I'm sure other people would be able to give you like so many things. This feels way harder, by the way. <laughs> well, that's why I stopped calling it the right of the lightning round because it gets to be like, what? No. Okay. Um. Hmm. I. I think Portuguese is the most beautiful language in the world. And even though my brand is in Portuguese, I, and I've learned Portuguese like three times in my life, I can barely get by with it because I don't have anyone close to me anymore who speaks it. Mm -hmm. um, but ugh, I think it's gorgeous. And every time, every time a Brazilian comes up to my booth and says, I'm like, okay, hold on. I've got a whole thing to tell you about it. I know it's not, it's not a brigadeiro, like it, ingredient wise at all, <laughs> but you have to try it because the texture is brigadeiro, go. <laughs> and then they're like, okay. And they try it and they're like, cool with it. But every time somebody with that gorgeous accent shows up, I'm like, we're going to have a whole discussion and that's fair. <laughs> 
<laughs> Love it. Okay. Uh, okay. One down, two to go. Um, I make dairy-free chocolate, but I am not dairy-free. A lot okay. of people think that because my stuff is like be vegan and all that, that I am vegan. But no, I am. I'm at all times just trying to eat all of the things because <laughs> I run too much and skip too many meals. <laughs> There you go. And mm. one more. Mm -mm -mm. I now have a workshop on my property in Wimberley that I'm very excited about. That's uh, awesome. Because I'm turning it into a commercial kitchen. It's functional right now, but still in progress and what I really want to do with it is create a small business hub it's going to be gluten-free that's pretty much the only like you have to you have to be gluten-free if you want to come into the kitchen okay um, not as a lifestyle you have to be gluten-free but your product has to be gluten-free because sure. there are like zero gluten-free kitchens in like a 50 mile radius okay even in Austin so um what I really want to do is offer the kitchen as a cold kitchen to small businesses who are trying to get out of cottage food law mm -hmm. and transition, get into stores or just whatever they want to do with it. Uh, but they can't afford commercial kitchens because they're insanely expensive. Um, so I just want to say like, you know, use the kitchen for a year for free and um, Conscious Goods and I are here for packaging consulting because we've spent the last five years like finding all the amazing eco-friendly packaging and there's so much of it now like mm -hmm. as compared to a few years ago um i don't know if that's so much about me but it's definitely about my dream and very interesting thing that i'm doing right now and so that's amazing and so <laughs> generous maybe next time when it's ready you can give us a little tour yes yeah and i thought about doing it out there today but it's like a metal like giant Quonset hut situation and I have not figured out how to get the reception anywhere sure. near decent. <laughs> Understood. Okay, a song you're listening to on loop. Um All We Got by Robin Schultz. I think that's my name. Okay, a movie that inspires you. Hmm. I haven't watched a movie in like a really long time. <laughs> okay, can I just be corny and say like, feel cool. good movie that makes me happy every year. Mamma Mia, we watch it on Christmas every year. Oh, it's weird oh. Christmas mission, but every time I watch it, it like makes my life. <laughs> That's amazing, okay. Um, and a book you love. Uh, Favorite book of all time would be Bridges of Madison County. Okay. But I love like a good fantasy series because I love to read and in my spare time I do not want to learn things. I'm not I'm not proud of it. I wish I No, no. I mean, well, I feel like but... in your non-spare time you're learning a lot, so it's okay not to. Yeah. I'm yeah. just I'm ready for someone to just take me away. So, uh favorite fantasy author is Sarah Moss, M-A-A-S. She's amazing. So good that I read all her books and then got my husband to listen to the audiobooks with me at nighttime, and now he's hooked. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, and then your favorite third place. It could be like a restaurant or a bar or a bookshop or... Favorite what place? third place so any place that's not that's not your home or your work okay favorite third place I love that I've got a couple good ones hmm well you can give us a couple okay <laughs> uh, Hayes City Store is kind okay. of a uh, country restaurant, sort of, I guess it's not really near anything, but it's kind of close to Wimberley. I'm probably going to go there today. 
Okay. And, um, they just have really simple comfort food. They have like excellent beers on tap and just a really great outdoor space. They have live music and there's always plenty of room. So you don't have to worry about, you know, being crowded in by people. Um, the vibe is really good there. And a community pizza in Wimberley. They, even though I can't eat the best of their pizza because it's glutinous, it's so gorgeous and wonderful. And their staff is amazing. And they as a company are like so good to their people. It's locally owned. Really Wimberley's got a lot of good stuff coming up. That's awesome. Uh, we have a question. What does the th what does the third place mean? A third place is a place outside of work and home, like Vivian said. Um, we love places where you can feel like a regular, and people know your name. You can always come back. Yeah. But it's any place that's outside of work and home that you go to sort of frequently, and I and it's a place that you like. Okay. Uh, last thing is I do want to call out your program because your program is so special and you uh, figured out a way to make regular, non-regulars feel like regulars. Can you tell us more about your program through, <laughs> through the third place? Uh, so it's mostly subscription based, but mm -hmm. um, you can go on there and just do a one-off purchase if you want to try it out. Mm -hmm. But you can pick your favorite format of chocolate. Um, I have little pocos, they're like truffles. Those are what I like to do at parties because they're like gorgeous. And when they're at room temperature, they're like butter. So you can just smear them. Oh. Uh, or you can pick bars and the bar people are bar people. The pocos people are pocos people. Mm -hmm. most, most do not want to mingle. So I, I made sure to put that in my email going out and like, Try it. Tell me what you think, but you're going to have a preference. <laughs> or awesome. um, you can order Best of Rotating, which is a seasonal subscription. Um, every month I do a rotating flavor. Mm -hmm. For Christmas I do two because I can't help it. But uh, every month I get to do something a little bit different. Sometimes I love a flavor for that month so much that it sticks around. I roll it back over the next year, but... Um, a lot of times they're just original and I'm trying something new. Um, so when you get the best of rotating seasonal, you're either getting like one of each of that season or I'm just like, no, this one was the actual best and I'm going to send you six of them. <laughs> but it's something that is really unique. It won't be around again, you know, until next year, if ever. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, it feels back. really personal too. Yeah, and the, the bags on those um, are all, like, hand-labeled, signed, um, so they're very, very personal. Awesome. And it's all going to be uh, shipped sustainably, which is tough to do when you're shipping cold stuff, but it is doable. So if anybody out there is, like, oh. how to do it, you can't, you can't, I promise, call me. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you to everyone who's joined. Have a very good day. You too. Take care. Bye.